All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday night. Tuesday night is upon us here, almost halfway through the work week. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe here at 10.13 p.m. California time, Tuesday night. Shows a 1.0 here into the Southern California area. Notice uh, up north here across the uh, area of the Queen Charlotte Sound, another earthquake coming in. Uh, earlier this morning, a 4.2 up here, northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, we're going to check that out here real quick. Uh, as we uh, let's open a separate window here. We're going to go up to the uh, Canada earthquakes map here and see what's going on up here. Where there's been uh, a little bit of uptick here recently off the coast here of the Queen Charlotte Sound area. Now we'll bring up the plate boundaries and show you guys all this earthquake activity that's occurring up here. And now I like the Canada map here because it shows you all the earthquakes that's actually happening. Unlike the USGS that might show an earthquake uh, or an aftershock, but uh, in all reality, they really don't show all the earthquakes that are happening here. So the latest, a 4.2, uh, that earthquake follows a uh, obviously a larger earthquake here in this region uh, a couple days ago. 6.5 earthquake here. And as you can see, there's a handful of other earthquakes here in this region. Northern edge here of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, and that's that's it. That is the Cascadia subduction zone up here, the extreme northern edge. And um, nothing big going on there yet, but uh, a handful of other aftershocks following that 6.5 earthquake that struck out here uh, back on the 15th a couple days ago USGS only shown that 6.5 and a 4.7 but obviously we know there's a little bit more stirring up out there uh, following that large earthquake Pacific Northwest relatively quiet we got a, a swarm going on here across the southern end of the Gorda plate uh, a couple of threes coming in here earlier this afternoon, 3.2, 3.0, and a, a two-pointer out there. Now, kind of curious here. Let's see if we got anything on the trimmer map here tonight. Might be uh, somewhat elevated with this activity. Uh, only 13 epicenters here. Only 13 epicenters. So, and it down here across the southern end of the Cascadia, uh, northern California area. So for that, uh, well, I mean, there's really not a whole lot of trimmer activity, but some movement down here across the southern end of the plate boundary. It's been shifting around, it seems like, from the southern end to the northern end here, where we've seen that 6.5 here recently. And Southern California obviously gets in here on the mix as well on occasion. Um, and more lately, definitely more lately here in the past seven, eight weeks or so, uh, we've seen a broad scale of uh, amount of earthquake activity here recently. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the 2.5 map and above. That uh, aside from the movement up in Northern California, the majority of these quakes here from yesterday in terms of 2.5 and above. Uh, below that magnitude, a handful of smaller quakes up around the Bay Area. Um, some movement around the Malibu area and also a couple earthquakes here outside of Ontario. This is a Fontana earthquake swarm area that's seen uh, a little bit of decent swarming here over the last couple weeks or so. As you can see, about 54 earthquakes here of various magnitudes underneath this area at uh, variable depths there. And uh, just kind of keep an eye on things, getting all these uh, little periodic earthquakes here. Nothing big for now but uh, as always you know Southern California is under a lot of strain here and uh, just we're watching it definitely keep an eye on that uh, some movement outside of Yellowstone National Park here not a whole lot um, I am gonna double check that not through the other site anymore I'm just gonna I don't know something tells me not to visit the other site there I was getting a warning there on the uh, the o the Yellowstone overview that I used to show out here might just be a certificate error. Who knows? But uh, I'm just going to try something here. Anyway, a couple of earthquakes here, as noted earlier this afternoon. Very small microquakes there across Yellowstone National Park. Uh, really nothing big going on there for now. Out across the Texas area uh, where that five-pointer struck here yesterday, right? That's where we've seen that five-pointer, 5.1. 5 
Out in the oil fields, seen a little bit of aftershock activity. Really nothing big today, just a little bit of uptick in terms of microquake movement across the oil fields there. Hawaii still seeing uh, an earthquake event out there, also an eruption event here across the upper or the uh, Middle East Rift Zone. For that, we're going to go over here to the uh, latest imagery. You just want to check this here real quick, show you guys a couple images of the latest um, eruption there across the Middle East Rift Zone. Here's the fissure activity here from the past two days. Here is uh, the most recent active fissure here near this crater region. It appears as though uh, we're getting a little bit further migration here to the east. Um, check out this overview here. Beautiful shot of the fountaining. Very minimal compared to you know Iceland or any other areas out there, but uh, uh, beautiful still nonetheless there. And uh, it's Hard to say exactly how long this is going to occur or going to continue, I should say. Uh, the volcano remains at a watch and orange level. This update here was put out early this morning. Uh, still looks like we're uh, having a little bit of eruption out there. As uh, far as webcams go, let's see if we can uh, spot any out in the distance here. I guess the nighttime is the best time to view uh, a potential eruption looks a little cloudy out there well that's yeah that's a little foggy it looks like I don't see anything way out in the distance maybe that could be the moon hard to say um, lower east rift zone nothing going on down there but that's uh, I think that's an older image yeah that's got to be the moon out there beautiful uh, but I'm not seeing anything showing up here on, on any of these cameras that would indicate uh, the continuance there of the eruption. So we'll have to check back uh, tomorrow morning for that. Earthquake activity out here. Uh, let's see, let's back out of here real quick for a little bit. It's mainly over here around where the eruption is happening, right in that area right here. As you can see on the map, they have it uh, pretty much in a white color, I guess. Here's our most recent ongoing eruption event there uh, earthquake activity fairly minimal surprising uh, not seeing a whole lot of uh, pressurization here across the area in terms of earthquake activity be interesting again to see how how long this continues and whether it just completely uh, dies out here uh, deformation data across the summit area starting to uh, level out after our latest migration of magma from the summit off to the Middle East Rift Zone. That's a significant amount. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that, report back on anything that changes out there. Just a little bit of earthquake activity, although it's di died down significantly out there uh, in the last 12 hours. New Zealand in between X marks, well, in between this X marks the spot and the X marks the spot down south here, really haven't seen anything that uh, is of noteworthy value down here for now. Um, just some three stirring up across the plate boundary. Nothing major, but they've been consistent here in the three magnitude range up and down the North and South Island area. Still expecting some movement though on the larger side of things here soon. A couple earthquakes here across the Java Trench. Five uh, magnitude five earthquake there. Also Taiwan getting in a handful of earthquakes. The Kurokam Chatka Trench up here, Japan northward. A couple fours stirred up out there. Really nothing major going on for now. Uh, Middle America Trench and South America area all fairly normal. They're always seeing earthquake activity out there. That's a given. Uh, trail of earthquakes here across the Himalayas. Look at that, across the plate boundary here. Getting in on a little bit of action there, some threes and twos. Something going on out here off the uh, coast of Madagascar. Let's see what we got here real quick. 5.2 earthquake, a little odd. Um, let's see what we got for historical data here. And I say it's a little odd because, well, Technically, at least uh, according to the USGS map here, there's been nothing uh, in this area of 4.5 and above since 1900. So a little bit of odd activity occurring out there off the coast of Madagascar area. 
about six miles deep here. Not for sure exactly what's underneath this region. Uh, let's see what we got. I don't know if there's any sea mounts out here or not, but either way, a little bit of earthquake activity out there today. Fairly recent, actually. And a little uncertain, though, on if there's two 5.2s or, or if this is just the uh, EMSC and USGS disagreeing with the magnitude, or not the magnitude, but it could be location or the depth of that earthquake. Also up here across the area of Turkey, getting uh, some earthquake activity where we've seen those seven pointers here last year. It's going to be in this area right down here. Showing a couple fours up here now. So some slight adjustment going on here across this area of the globe today. Iceland, uh, not a whole lot going on right there now, but north of there along the plate boundary, some three stirring up out there. The Atlantic Ocean, 4.9. In the mid Atlantic Ridge area. So we'll kind of keep an eye on things, see how it plays out. Getting a little bit of data blackout right now from the sun being eclipsed. That's why we get this blackout here every 24 hours. So, data wise, still getting bombarded here with the protons, mainly affecting the polar regions here, north and south here, obviously. Flare threat uh, remains at about 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 55, uh, X flare around 20% chance or so. And of course, that proton event continuing with elevated 30% possibilities there. There's all of our aurora activity. Um, the culprit of the aurora activity here from last night. Nothing going on here tonight, though. Things fairly quiet. Really not looking at anything else in the forecast for now in terms of the auroras we'll continue to keep an eye on it uh, looking at the sunspots out here 3825 is the culprit of that large x flare here recently and the most recent uh, aurora event last night starting to uh starting to fade off like dust in the wind out here right now but really not dust in the wind this is more like plasma on the sun uh, these sunspots or at least this sunspot here it's going through some type of phase out here uh, with a little bit of separation of the main core. So a little uncertain on if this is going to produce anything major or not. Right now, not looking likely, but uh, it could potentially reorganize and re-strengthen. We'll uh, keep an eye on that because that is directly facing Earth. A few other sunspots out there across the far eastern limb of the sun that are really not all that uh, active looking. Uh, the latest image here at the far side of the sun. Here's the Earth-facing side. There's our um, 3825. Really not a whole lot coming around the bend here in terms of the eastern limb, which would be right here. This is the far side of the sun. One sunspot area and maybe one behind that. But it looks as though we may be entering into a little quiet period of space weather activity. Uh, unless this... Uh, 3825 here amplifies in the coming days but who knows we'll definitely watch that all right i've been seeing a whole bunch of weather posts out here recently about a hurricane coming into the florida area here next week so let's take a look here at the latest gfs model and see what we got as we put this into motion here uh looking at this weekend there is middle of next week and uh, the GFS model definitely hinting at some type of tropical development. Not super strong, but any type of hurricane out there across Florida would create a little bit of havoc right now. Um, that's a GFS model. Um, ECMWF doesn't go out that far, so who's to say? If we look at the National Hurricane Center out here in the Atlantic, we got uh, one chance here, or one, one disturbance uh, that's showing some type of activity here in the coming days. Uh, again, th these models are, are so far out. You know, it's a, it's a week away as far as this potential hurricane goes. And uh, we'll have to double check back, on, we'll double check on it as we get a little bit closer to the time period. This is for Thursday of next week. Showing some type of major hurricane there. 
in the Gulf of Mexico, potentially slamming into the western Florida area. Well, I would say all of Florida, if that is the case. As far as um, anything uh, pattern related in terms of high pressure, low pressure, out here across the west coast, goodness, we are enjoying some beautiful weather. Upper 70s here for the daytime highs over the past couple days. Goodness, I love it. That is going to come to a quick end. Uh, we got one more cool day tomorrow, and then the high pressure builds back in for California, bringing with it some upper 90s, and we might even tap into the hundreds again. You know, everyone's saying, well, that's normal. It happens all the time out here in California. Well, I don't want to be a part of that normal. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm ready to move somewhere else where 100, temp 100 degree temperature is like once in a lifetime thing or maybe a record breaking. Here we get 100, 110 degrees for three months at a time out of the year. And that's in Northern California. That's not Death Valley. That's in Northern California, the Sacramento Valley. Um, October, September, the remainder of September looks fairly hot and persistently hot out here across the majority of the country. We'll see what plays in effect there for October. The patterns obviously will start to change. Um, looking at the northern hemisphere here, though, uh, there's not a whole lot of low pressure troughs out here that we would normally see in the winter time or fall time. Uh, hopefully that will change here soon. I don't want to see a bunch of high pressures up here. That would not be good. All right, uh, live seismograph stations there look pretty quiet. Um, Continue to keep an eye on things, see what plays out here. Uh, with California, the activity recently has been consistent with periods of elevated earthquake activity, followed by a couple days of quietness or normal activity out here. And uh, today, somewhat normal, I guess. But we, we're still seeing those areas that we've been watching here recently get hit with periodic small earthquakes. That includes Malibu. Over here across the Fontana area, Bakersfield area, Ridgecrest. Uh, nothing on the Puente Hills Stress Fault. And that's the area that uh, seen the four-pointer here recently and a couple other aftershocks. But uh, nothing here. Um, well, they had a few earthquakes here in the last seven days, but looks like the last one, the 1.0 from yesterday. Uh, again, periodic quietness followed up by... Uh, an elevated event so we'll continue to keep an eye on things out here folks hope everyone has a good a good evening out there and um i'll catch you guys back out here for the wednesday morning update i think i'm gonna call it a night 10 30 uh, i don't know i, I missed my bedtimes of eight o'clock i used to go to bed at eight o'clock and then it's i don't know I find myself waking up at 3, 4 in the morning. So stay up a little bit later. Hopefully try to sleep in a little bit later. But uh, I don't know. Definitely having some issues here recently with sleeping. I'm trying all sorts of stuff here. Natural natural remedies to fall asleep nice. But uh, I, I just toss and turn too much. I don't know why. It, it just happens. I think I know why. It's got something to do with my... Uh, my previous job that I worked at, a real-time job, um, for about 10, 12 years. And uh, it was rotating shifts that consisted of various odd days off, if I even got them. And 12-hour rotating shifts, day and nights, within the same week, are brutally uh, brutal on your sleeping patterns. And I still have not recovered from it after working at that job for 12 years. But no more. But the, the results of uh, doing that are lingering with me here, unfortunately. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Enough about me. Have a good night. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning. Stay safe, everyone. Be prepared.